Serious what are some scary, horrifying, creepy things that have happened to you, or in general, that could have a plausible explanation, but still freak you out. This one is kinda creepy, but also kinda comforting. This story was told to me by my grandmother, who is a no-nonsense kinda broad, so I believe every word of it. My grandma had a neighbor slash friend who unfortunately lost her husband when she was young, about 40 or so years ago. It was a sudden death, cardiac arrest or something like that. So this woman was so upset because for a couple years after his death, she couldn't dream of her husband. For some reason, it really bothered her that she couldn't experience a dream with him in it. It's almost like she wanted it for the comfort. Anyway, some time passes, and this woman is preparing to sell her house and move closer to her kids. They lived the state over. Suddenly, she gets her wish. She starts dreaming, and her husband is in them. She has multiple of these dreams, and in every one her husband wakes her up, sits down on the bed, and starts speaking to her. However, his speech horrifies her. It was described to me as backwards or garbled. I imagine it to be something similar to the way Twin Peaks characters speak in the Black Lodge. So yeah, pretty goddamn creepy. She can't make a single word out. A few days before she's about to move out for good, she goes to bed and dreams of him again. The dream is the same, except she understands one word he says. He grabs her in the dream and repeatedly says rafters, almost seeming panicked. She wakes up rattled, but returns to sleep. The next day, as she's finishing up packing in the basement, she looks up and sees her rafters. She remembers the dream and is compelled to reach into them. She does and pulls out thousands of dollars worth of WW2 bonds her husband had purchased without her knowledge. She swears he never told her about them. So he appeared in her dream to tell her so she wouldn't leave all those bonds behind when she sold the house. Story still gives me chills today. I've posted this before. But here it is again. The plausible explanation is sleep paralysis, but I've never experienced anything like it before or after this incident. When I was in elementary school, I shared a queen size bed with my older sister and our family dog, a mutt that looked like a short haired lassie, would sleep at the foot of our bed every night. When I was about 6 years old, I woke up one night around midnight and saw a dark figure standing at the foot of the bed. The figure was entirely in black without any eyes or a face. I tried to wake my sister up, but she rolled over to go back to sleep. My sister must have accidentally kicked the dog, because the dog woke up and raised her head and started growling at the figure at the foot of the bed. The growling then woke my sister up, and she saw the figure and started screaming. When my parents came into the room and turned the light on, nothing was there. To this day, both my sister and I are adamant that we saw a ghost or other demon in our room. We know we aren't crazy, because the dog saw it too. Before my parents split up, we used to live in this huge old house. We lived in that old leaky house, until I was about 14. The thought was to renovate the nearly 100 year old house, but I guess life got in the way for my parents. The house had two floors, and all of our bedrooms was up on the second floor. The largest part of the second floor was dominated by the attic. It was a creepy attic filled with discarded things from both our family and the previous owners. I knew the attic pretty well, because although I was terrified of it me and my best friend would hide things we shouldn't have there, a stolen baseball bat, fireworks and other things 10, 14 year olds would hide from their parents. The attic had old wooden door that had a key in it. The door was always locked, unless someone was in there. My bedroom shared a wall with this attic. I had insomnia when I was a kid. Or at least the doctors told my parents it was insomnia. One of my biggest secrets is that I slept with a night light on, hiding under the covers and pillows, until I was 14. I would strategize how I would sleep and make it look like the bed was empty by sleeping under the mattress or by having my head under the pillows. The reason? Almost every night I would hear stuff from the attic shift and move. It often sounded like somebody was rolling heavy balls, like bowling balls or the like across the floor in the attic. Sometimes I would hear knocks on the walls. Sometimes I heard what sounds like whispers. Me and my best friend would sometimes summon the courage to explore the attic in the daytime. Always with the door open, never alone. I was obsessed with finding the balls I heard rolling across the floor. The other sounds I could write off as sounds a house would make. 
but the rolling balls and the whispers were unexplained. We never found the rolling balls, or any other source, that could explain it. I'm sure there could be a plausible explanation, but I never found one. I do not believe in the supernatural, but for some reason, I still get scared thinking about it. We moved when I was 14, and the first night after we moved, I slept with all the lights off, head on the pillow. I have slept well since. I spoke with my mother about these things a couple of years ago, when I told her about the sounds. She grew a fearful expression, and said she didn't want to talk about it anymore. A couple of weeks ago, I was laying in bed trying to go to sleep, and I hear my TV come on. I lay in bed a few seconds hoping to hear my fat ass cat jump off the coffee table. I get up, and go out to the living room, and said fat ass cat is posted up on a table by the window, and nowhere near the TV remote. The way my house is set up, my bedroom is behind the living room and my living room TV is perpendicular to the wall, not parallel. So I walk up to the back of the TV and, right when I get next to it, it shuts off. Glow of the screen disappears, sound stops. I'm 100% freaked the fuck out, so I unplug it. I go lay back down in bed. My heart is still going thump thump thump, and I'm trying my best to pretend everything is a-okay. So I lay there a few more minutes, and then I hear more goddamn noise from the living room. I'm so freaked out. I get my stun baton out, to go check out the new noise. Because I might be able to taste the poltergeist. I poke my head into the living room. The TV definitely isn't on. I listen for a few seconds, and realize this noise is coming from my laptop. The laptop I haven't opened in probably two weeks. I lift the lid on it, and uTorrent has decided to open itself, and start running pop-up ads. I mute the laptop, go back to bed, and lay in bed awake until 4am. In the morning I'm texting my boyfriend about it. He does so googling. Turns out almost dead TV remote batteries can send garbage signals, that the TV will interpret as the on signal. I've had my TV, since 2011 and the remote still has Vizio branded batteries. I still don't have a good explanation for the laptop. When I was like 4 or 5, I remember waking up one day in the early hours of the morning. It was still dark outside, and I groggily made my way to my parents' room, expecting them to still be asleep. When I opened the door, the room was fully lit, my parents were nowhere in sight, and there was a man and a woman I don't recognize on the bed. The following events are pretty hazy in my memory, but basically, they seemed surprised, and one of them asked something along the lines of who's he, to the other. Still too sleepy and young to process anything, I just closed the door, went back to my room, and fell asleep again. When I woke up in the morning, my parents were there, and the day continued as normal. I've never seen those two people again, and until now I'm still wondering if I had a supernatural encounter, or if it's just a really vivid dream I had as a child. Maybe your parents are swingers, and had some friends over while you were sleeping. This reminds me of something that happened in my early 20s. A friend and I were walking down this wide road in a suburban slash rural area. There wasn't shit around for miles, no cars passing by, no factories or stores, nothing. All of a sudden, the air felt heavy and no clue how else to say it. It wasn't humidity, but just some thick presence, and this horrible smell filled the air. It smelled like sweaty ass and balls and old piss. We both started gagging, but laughing because it was ridiculous. It went away after a few minutes, and no lingering trace of the smell or feeling was left. I still have no idea what the fuck that was. I was in a major car accident over a decade ago. My car was hit by another car in such a way where I lost control of the car. The car somehow went on a full circle on the highway. I t-boned a jersey wall, completely destroying it and cracking the next two in line. And I bounced off that onto an off-ramp with my side of the car facing traffic. I'm about to exhale when I hear hey kid. When I start counting you have 8 seconds to move your car or you're going to be hit by an 18 wheeler. Do you understand? 8.7. 0.6 inch voice didn't have to tell me twice, I threw my car into drive, and got onto the shoulder. At 1, an 18 wheeler drove by the spot my car was parked on. I should have died, according to the cops surveying the crash site later, but I walked away with a few bruises and I needed a root canal a few days later. I probably imagined the voice, but damn I'm believing it was something otherworldly. 
It was around 2 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I was in my village home for the holidays. I went outside to the pond to go for a swim. I remember being told to never go there alone, but didn't listen. After going about it for a bit I got really tired and decided it was enough. I went back up out of the pond and saw my sandals were floating very close by on the surface of the water. I thought I had it in me to push out a few more drops of energy and decided to jump back in to get my sandals. Note, there was still no one around at the time. I had both of them in my hands and tried to waddle my way back since I was extremely exhausted. I started to realize that I wasn't getting out anytime soon with both sandals in my hands and let go of both of them. I tried to scramble out and got really close to the steps that leads out but couldn't make it. I wanted to live, that's all I could think of at that moment. I panicked and splashed, but couldn't make it in time. I started to drown, I knew that I'd pushed myself too far, and though I was only a few steps away from the stairs, couldn't muster the energy to go forward. I was completely underwater now, and water going into my lungs. So I just let go, I thought to myself, this is my moment, this is my time. I stopped struggling and accepted I was going to die, and at that moment, I somehow floated back to the top. I saw my chance and took those last few steps and finally got out. I figure that, since I relaxed my body, I was able to float back up, but the experience still haunts me because it was only because at that time I decided to give in and die that I'm still alive today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to turn on notifications, so you'll be sure to know when the next video comes out. Want to watch some more? Check out my other videos. I really do appreciate everyone who helps make these videos possible. And as always, thanks for watching.